Hello, people. Hello, ha. Hello, ha. That is my signature calling, along with an and grief, I'll hold a kiss. My yesterday video, that was 31 minutes. But more take the time to, re to, to listen to it. That, it crapped out of me. I was about ready to greet y'all with a holy kiss and grace and peace. And then my phone storage cropped out, so I got 31 minutes out of it. I'm back to the playground. I'm sitting on the slide. And uh, just got back from uh, taking my daughter, my youngest daughter, who's 26, who moved to Cambridge, her little mini fridge. It's been driving around in my, in my car for like a month and change. Took the back roads there to get to Cambridge. Didn't have a lot of gas. So I'm like, okay, Lord, stretch this fucking gas out. Because, and he has. And on the way back, I got lost. Take, trying to take the back roads, back roads back. I got lost a little bit, but years and years back, cleaning houses. Got into Wellington 34, and I, then I was like, okay, I know where I'm going. And uh, I had to stop at the, the No Frills grocery store. So I had a couple bucks left and uh, get some sparkling water. And because uh, I like my sparkling water, like, that's my treat. Anyways, and uh, the girl sitting there in the alcove when I came out, I didn't know her when I was going in. She had her hoodie on and she's on the streets. And I pass by her and she looks really freaking downtrodden. So I go to my car and I'm like, you know what, five bucks. And she smokes. She doesn't have any smokes. Let's go to my car, get some smokes, and I come back out. And I had uh, one cold sparkling water left that I had taken with me to my daughter's the car, and I hadn't opened it yet. So I asked her, I said, hey, do you smoke? And, and uh, she goes, yeah. And I said, well, I gave her a couple smokes. I only had a few on me, but I said, give me what I have. I said, I get thirsty here. It's okay, so she was. She goes, yeah, she didn't have a water bottle or anything, so I gave her my sparkle water. She looks fucking sad. So I told her, I asked her her name. I told her my name. I was down and I touched her knee, and I said, it's going to be okay. I said, I used to be on the streets in Toronto back in the 80s, back in the day, and I said, I'm, I'm, on, and I'm on disability. I don't, have, I don't have any money to give you, sweetheart. But what I do have to give you, and I said, everything's gonna be all right. And she was, looked like she was gonna cry. And I felt like I was gonna cry. And she's like, thank you. And I'm like, so I you know, introduced my name and her name was Dana. And we shook hands and I said, it's gonna be okay. Circumstances are subject to change. It's gonna be okay. It'll work out. Everything will work out. And she's like, thank you so much. Well, she was like, she was tearing up. Sitting there in the corner on the ground. Blew her hoodie over her head. And, you know, I know I know that feeling. I know what it's like to live in abandoned buildings. I know what it's like not to have any food. Sorry. I got in the car and I left and I uh I started crying, I just prayed for her. Just praying. I'm just thinking about the little stuff that's coming out of this world. Anyway. All these people, these hurting people. And then the, I turn the radio on and it's under pressure. Freddie Mercury and David Bowie. So I'm blasting it. It had just started. So I'm driving away and I'm like... Oh, so limited in these, these mortal frames. Anyway. We're under grace right now. We're still in the era of grace. That time's soon coming to a close. I know, I know all of you that are believers and you know me and you've been following my channel, you understand. I know, by the way, if you're new here, I'm Jax. You're watching Unapologet, Unapologet, Unapologetically Jax, sorry. I'm really moved to my heart. There's so many suffering people, so many people homeless, living in their, just living wherever. And I remember sleeping in concrete, sleeping in the park like this, 
freezing, 16 years old, freezing in the winter time, sleeping in a cardboard box. Literally, a big huge fridge box with three of my friends, caught pneumonia. My right lung didn't have any money for medication. ER gave me one pill. I asked the doctor, the late female doctor, if I could, she had bus fare so I could get back to the squat that me and my friends were, and she said no. I was 16 years old with bacterial pneumonia. And she gave me one uh, heavy duty and then one to take and then I had a prescription and said no to a dollar bus fare back in those days and she was a doctor. And my friend that was with me, he was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I had to walk for like 20 city blocks to get back to our squat, abandoned building that we're living in. And then my friends nursed me back to health. They went and sold Campbell's soups and got bl had blankets and covered me up in blankets, let me sweat it out. And uh, my sister had sent me money for a prescription, but I didn't know because it came to an address nearby and somebody stole it. Those days, send cash in 1986. Someone stole it. I never knew till years later. But I got through it. God got me through it. It was very painful. <laughs> But my friends knew some health, they'd go stealing, shoplifting, chicken noodle soup, trying to get me better. Go steal me Advil and Tylenol, trying to get me better. Because we're family. All the street kids, we're family. Anyways, I've been through a lot of stuff in my life. A lot of hard stuff. A lot of suffering. And I'm not angry. I want to read something. I didn't plan on saying all this. So I'm going to read this. Maybe it'll tie in. See, hopefully my phone doesn't crap out. It's from Rick Longfist, Daily Thoughts from Scripture. He doesn't have any more copies. My friend Nance, she asked uh, yesterday in one of the comments. Thank you for all your kind comments, too, as always. It's called Wait. So that be not judging anything before the season, till the Lord should be coming, who will also illuminate the hidden things of darkness and manifest the counsels of the heart, the hearts, and that applause will be coming to each one from God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. There is a tendency to make a judgment call on certain individuals who may have thoughts that you do not agree with, what we might believe from the scriptures. I know I've been guilty of this, and I know, me too, and I know from some of the communications I get that others are in the same boat. Here Paul tells us not to judge anything before the season. The season would be the season of harvest, or the harvest season. No farmer knows how great a harvest he'll reap until harvest time. He may have ideal weather or drought, so he waits and works at his business, and that is what Paul is telling us. Judging is what comes at the end of our lives, not at the beginning or in the middle, but at the end. This eon we are all we are in is called the time of grace, which means there's no judging happening by or from God. So why do we feel at liberty to judge one another? Obviously, there are teachings that we know are false, as well as teachers, but we are only told to admonish them, and then only twice. Warn a divisive person once, and then warn them a second time. After that, have nothing to do with them. Titus chapter 3, verse 10. Paul also tells us, And I am entreating you, brethren, to be noting those who are making dissensions and snares beside the teaching which you learned, and avoid them. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Doesn't mean we don't pray for them or love them. I'm adding that in. But again, we're never told to judge them, only avoid them. By avoiding them, we leave them in the hands of God who is working in them as he works in all. No one knows what God will do in the lives of anyone, so to judge anything or anyone before the time of harvest would be premature and a false judging. We do not know what God is doing in anyone's heart or when he will work in someone's heart. So wait before judging. You will be as God who is waiting for the seeds to harvest that he has sown. Then he will be the judge of what 
fruit the harvest produces and the applause will come from him because we are all his workmanship. And this next one is called Wisdom from the Heart. According to human standards, we who are believers are not that wise. For simply, consider your own call, brethren, not many of you are considered to be wise according to human estimates and standards. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. That's from the Amplified Bible. The reason for this is, for by faith are we walking, not by perception. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. The psalmist wrote, They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Psalm 112, verse 7. We walk and believe from the heart, not for from what has been carefully planted oh sorry from what has been carefully planted there by God that is where we are we are wise not where those who do not believe not where those who do not believe find their wisdom from their human intellect but where God but where God plants it in a place that he controls which is our hearts in proverbs chapter 2 verse 10 we read for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul the wisdom is the wisdom of God, and the knowledge is the knowledge of Him. In Job 37, there is a verse that has been horribly mistranslated, but by a few translations. Here is Job chapter 37, verse 24, from some of the popular translations, and you'll see why they differ just by a glance. The NSAB. Therefore men fear Him. He does not regard any who are wise of heart. King James. Men do not do therefore fear him. He respecteth not any that are wise of heart. The Jubilee Bible. Men therefore shall fear him. All the crafty of heart shall not see him. And some same verse from a few other translations telling us the opposite. Therefore people revere him. For does he not have regard for all the wise in heart? That's NIV. The New Living Translation. No wonder people everywhere fear him. All who are wise show him reverence. From the concordant literal translation of the Old Testament, wherefore men fear him. Do not all wise of heart fear him? What's the difference there? That is some very confusing translating. Yes, I got I agree. Do the wise of heart fear him? show him reverence and does he not have regard for them or does he not regard them and have no respect for those wise of heart job tells us the fear of the lord that is wisdom job chapter 28 verse 28 the amplified expounds on this but to man he said behold the reverential and worshipful fear of the lord that is wisdom paul tells us to be observing accurately accurately then brethren how you are walking, not as unwise, but as wise, reclaiming the era for the days are wicked. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, 16. The wisdom of the heart is the wisdom of the Lord. It is where he continues to work. Our minds can wander, but a heart controlled by the Lord is steadfast. As the psalmist wrote, my heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing yes, I will sing praises. Psalm 57, verse 7. When the two on the road to Emmaus, Maus, I probably said that wrong, Maus, were walking and talking with whom they thought was a stranger, who when have having finished expounding all things from the scriptures concerning their Lord and his sacrifice, looked to one another after the stranger left and said, Was not our heart burning in us as he spoke to us on the road, as he opened to, uh, up to us the scriptures? Luke 24, verse 32. Their human mind did not recognize, even recognize him, but their hearts were burning inside their chest with every word he spoke. That is where the wisdom of the Lord is planted in our hearts. Their human intellect could never have been reasoned with. Try to convince someone of what you believe from the simplest truth. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. To all and all will be reconciled to him. You can't. Only from the wisdom planted in the heart does someone believe and understand. The writer of Proverbs said, Wisdom reposes, reposes in the heart of the discerning, 
and even among fools, she lets herself be known. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 33. The wisdom of the Lord has been placed in our hearts, and as we seek to know him, he opens our hearts wider and deeper. We find that we know also that wisdom is like honey for you when you find it. There it is a future expectation for you, and your expectation will not be cut off. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 14. Because the one who planned the wisdom of him in our hearts wants us to know him and his ways, and he will reveal himself to all that he has planted his wisdom in their hearts. How blessed are we that, under, that are, have been given the truth and understand the truth. Love you all very much. I greet you all with a holy kiss. Grace and peace to you wherever you are day and night today. Sorry I started off that this video in tears. No, I'm sorry, not sorry. Just, uh... When I, in other videos when I've talked about depression, it's the suffering of the world. I can feel it. I know you guys can too. Someday soon, we're gonna be immortal. And we see and we shall be like him. And Paul tells us, don't you know, you'll be judging not just the world, but angels. I brought my scriptures, but I don't know what time I'm at. I can't see. I'll keep this one a little shorter. But you know, in re reference to Martin Zender's video today about God hates equality. Before he even said it, I turned to Paul. We were having coffee, and I said, God's not a socialist. And that's not against that young sister. He's not trying to be mean by any means. We have to be careful. Because human humanistic reasoning, right? There's many of us have gone through... Well, we all go through suffering. There's times of blessing, and there's times of suffering, and even in our suffering, understanding who Christ Jesus is and who Father God is. Store not your treasures on earth, right? Or thieves and rust and moths, get it? Store it in heaven. In heaven. Our eyes are on things above. And you know, uh, Stephen Janowski had said something in one of Martin's videos back about how he's less and less close to this flesh. I, I know I'm saying it wrong, but I understood what he meant. And like I said to Paul last night, and Paul agrees too, and I know many of you do too, you know, t food doesn't even taste good anymore. It hasn't for a while. Not because, well, yeah, I know I smoke. But that's not, there's no enjoyment here. Nothing. The only time I get joy is talking with other believers about the scriptures and about the depths of God. Or when I'm reading the scriptures and meditating on the depths. Want to see the clouds? They're so beautiful. One of these days, we're going to be above those. Huh. I've been on a plane. I've seen the clouds below. We're going to be in the celestial realm. Oh. I wish everyone knew the truth. I know you all do too. They will. What day? Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is, tongue is going to declare. To claim that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the Lord and glory of the Father. And then... Some will hand over everything to the Father. Death is abolished once and for all. God becomes all in all. It's all part of this plan. Even though sometimes we don't understand, Father, why are you working it out? All these things in all of our lives. It's like a tapestry 
the back of it, all these strings, and it, does, it looks like it's jumbled mess. And you turn it around. It's a beautiful masterpiece. So, so am I, so are you. No matter what you're going through today. Remember, it's not over yet. Christianity will tell you that you only you live once, and it's heaven or hell. It's a lie. We know from the scriptures. We who know. Bring you wisdom. We know the truth. That Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind. Be conciliated to God. Because he's already conciliated to you. He's already. Sin was dealt with. He was taken to the grave by his son. And left there. When he resurrected his son. Talk to you all again soon. I love you all very much.